And a very warm welcome to the Property Developers and Investors podcast. It's Nigel Green here from the Miyaka Academy, and I'm absolutely delighted today to have with me Mr. Matthew Hope. How are you doing, Matthew? Good, Nigel. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting me on the podcast. Uh, really honoured. Looking forward to it. Oh, you're, you're very, very welcome. And, you know, I think I am, and uh, I, know, I know the story, but our listeners are going to be absolutely intrigued. And you know, really appreciate kind of the, the wisdom that comes out of your mouth of, of your history for sure. I think just for the benefit of the the listeners, would you mind just introducing yourself and maybe just giving a bit of a background, if that's okay? Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, my name is Matthew Hope. I live and invest um, about twenty minutes from Cardiff. I live in a small market town called Cowbridge, and I invest really in a no more than a twenty mile radius from there. Um, started off my property journey in the state agency actually I was an estate agent for quite a few years um back in the heyday in 20 uh 2006 and 2007 where you could buy properties with something called a vendor gift which no longer exists anymore where you could um, have the 10 percent deposit basically for nothing so I bought a couple of properties that way um then went into uh, a gym, owning a gym, which I still currently own um, alongside, obviously, the property. Um, started investing in property seriously about five years ago, where it just started with terrace houses in the Welsh Valleys, um, buy, refurbish, refinance, and just use that cookie cutter model to build a portfolio, really. Um, and then about three years ago i did my first commercial conversion um an old pub that had significant fire damage and converted that into six apartments um and in the middle of that was where i came across you and mark really um as i thought i'd uh, bitten off a bit more than i could chew and thought i needed a bit of help and from there i've done uh, other developments um some new builds and currently in the middle of um, doing a nine unit um, scheme um, that was uh, formerly a hotel, Indian restaurant, and also a cannabis factory. So, <laughs> uh, and it's, yeah, it's got a few uh, few stories to tell that particular one, hasn't we? I'm sure we're going to hear a bit more about that as we yeah. as we go through this chat. But um, really interesting, isn't it? How the world is change from as you mentioned there 2006 and you know the the vendor gifts and you know the same day mortgaging and all these sort of aspects that we've kind of gone through the things have changed haven't they you know they have and you know i think yeah, we've all had to to flex the way that we operate in the property world it's um it's quite quite intriguing really it really is but can i can i ask you what what made you choose property as a vehicle uh to wealth and success um yeah, sure. I always thought property, um, obviously there's many other investment types, but what I loved about property is it's a fixed asset. You own that asset, you can see it. Um, and also, you know, um, if you get the rental income from that property, if, you, if your strategy is to hold, and hopefully you'll also get capital growth um, as well, obviously, you that's inevitable if you're going to hold that for 10 15 20 years you'd be very unlucky not to see any capital growth so that was my main reason um and i like how you can use certain strategies um you know to, to excel your profits um and how quickly you can grow is definitely um through commercial conversions that's the strategy that i've mainly chosen i just feel that's such a great way to jump so much further than just keep doing one terrace house at a time obviously that is quite a slow process and um, so that's what the main reason why i've chosen commercial conversions yeah yeah it's kind of supercharging that ability to build a portfolio you're almost doing it in one one development aren't you you know if you're creating you know in your case you know nine units on one site that's 
that's a nine unit portfolio in, in, in one go, you know, and you get obviously the benefits of um, buying power and all those sort of, you know, the scale of economy, I suppose, from that perspective, it's really, really very powerful for sure. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting you, you talk there about, um, you know, that fixed asset class and, you know, what history has told us about property. And yeah, of course it goes up and down and we go through cycles, don't we? And we've seen those, but, but thank goodness, you know, history has told us that generally it's in the upward direction, which is, you know, very, very positive. And, you know, I'd, you've probably heard my story about, you know, I, I had this inherent distrust around pension schemes. Um, I don't necessarily know why. I think it was just the disconnection from it um, yeah. that my my interaction with the pension was kind of once a, once a year when the letterbox fluttered and it letter dropped on the mat and I'd look at it and it's most uninspiring moment of my year, quite frankly. Yeah. You know, it just said a number. and But I, I noticed how... Um, you know, the brokers would take their fee in advance of whether it was up neutral or down. And I, I just really couldn't connect with it. So, so my strategy almost was I'm going to create another pension scheme and that's going to be via property that, as you say, it's physically there. You can go and drive up to it. You can go into it, all the rest of it, but it's physically there. And it's, it's, a, it's, again, it's a wonderful asset class because, you know, it's something you can move through your generations as well, isn't it? Yeah, you know, exactly. Right. What I found amazing when, when I did my, complete my first commercial conversion is those six flats were all rented out and it's I've still owned that property and it nets just under £3,000 a month. And, you know, that's a salary, more mm -hmm. than the average salary, where I'm doing very little work for. Um, don't get me wrong, it's very challenging at the time um completing the project but once that project's done you know you're pretty much hands off hands mm -hmm. to the estate agent um all my properties are managed so um you just get the statement every month and the rent comes in obviously you are going to get a few um troubles along the way um but if you have six or nine or whatever it might be um apartments or houses in the one site it just makes everything so much easier to manage absolutely 100 um, percent. absolutely it's um you know it, it's suffering the pain in the short term to get the uh, delight in the long term isn't it you know from uh, from those property assets which is absolutely definitely yeah yeah very good maybe you could tell us about some of the key milestones um and achievements in your property giant journey thus far yeah, so um, one of the biggest milestones and challenges is our latest development. Um, that I was, I bought that uh, for one hundred and fifty thousand um, from uh, proceeds of crime due to the cannabis factory. Uh, I then obtained um, planning for nine flats. Uh, which came the planning came with its challenges as well because COVID came and there was delay. So to actually get the planning, it took around eighteen months. Um, we also had a sitting tenant that came with the property once I purchased the property, uh, which was an Indian takeaway. Um, there was a passing rent there of a thousand pound a month, so I thought. Uh, you know that great that's going to be some cash flow coming in from day one um to cover any x's that might come with uh owning the building insurance all that sort of stuff uh it didn't turn that turn out that way um as the tenant didn't pay rent for um ever he was there for 16 months um this was just before covid um but then obviously it was very difficult to remove him during those times. Um, I employed uh, an expert in the area to evict him, um, which happened. We evicted him successfully. Um, that day, he then um, broke back in and started trading because it was a Friday, so he wanted his, uh, his uh, weekend trading. Um, so then on the Monday, he was evicted again. And then long story short, um, 
he was actually wrongly evicted by um, the expert I put in place to um, execute the eviction. So then I had to um, employ another solicitor to then, um, you know, sue the first solicitor, basically. So that was very challenging. It took a long, long time. I know, Nigel, you were helping me through that one. Um, and it was very frustrating at times, but um, we, the outcome was positive in the end. Um, the tenant was removed and uh, everyone was comp compensated accordingly. So um, that was definitely the biggest challenge along with um, raising the finance um, that has had a few trials and tribulations along the way, but we are um, getting there now. We're about a third of the way through the project. Um, but it, I think it's important to know every development is very different. The first commercial conversion seemed a challenge at the time, but it was an absolute breeze compared to this one. So it's it's definitely getting all your ducks in a row and being prepared for the unexpected. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, history is, um, you know, certainly when I was when I was young, you know, um, back in the day, it was it was almost making mistakes was kind of seen as a, a bad thing. Um, but today, actually, I think mistakes have to be made to to be able to learn from them. You know, and I think we, I think we all go into situations because you only know what you know, Matthew, don't you? You only know Definitely. what you know. Yeah. things come at you from left and right, and and you, you know, there's always things we can do better. I'm I'm no different. You know, there's always things we can do better, maybe next time round. But it's it's really a case of, you know, engaging the problem, you know, finding the way to. If you need to get professionals in to help you or whatever it may be to to overcome the problem but i think fundamentally just keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep getting yourself through this mud because the mud eventually yeah. will will be washed away and it'll be clear water won't it as you get towards the end of the development and and look what you'll have you know again you've built another portfolio of of nine units um you know it's going to be a wonderful site it's going to cash flow you and your family for Many many years to come, and yeah. um, you know, again, a great addition to your to your portfolio, which is which is great. But yeah, it's it's those it's those gritty experiences that yeah, I, I love talking to people about these. You know, it's not just the high fiving and the, you know the, the positive stuff because I think people need to really understand the stuff that doesn't go quite as well, and it's never anybody's fault necessarily. It's just sometimes circumstances. And, and, you know, to hear that and you, you being so candid in your response, I thought that was great. In, in terms yeah. of moving on to lessons, I suppose, lessons learned, um, what have you, what have you learned along the way? Um, I think one of the key ones that uh, yourself and Mark always instill in your mentees is to get the right people around you. I think that is key. Um, I'm really lucky that I have my own build team that I've built um, over the last four or five years. I've kissed many frogs in that regard, but I've now got a team that I trust um, and they always deliver for me. They've done multiple projects um, and that goes down to other people like the correct solicitors, the correct brokers, um, all those kind of people the correct planning consultants um, is definitely the key to your success because no one knows everything. Um, you keep uh, you, you keep to what you know best. That might be finding deals. For me, that's finding deals. Um, I also like to get involved with the project management side um, just because I enjoy that. Um, but I definitely like someone alongside me to throw ideas off and everything like that but i'd say yeah getting the right people around you and the right education because no one's definitely no one's going to have um, a clear run at property there's definitely going to be challenges whatever route you choose but mm. you know there's also very big rewards as well very much so and you know you hit the nail on the head get the right people around you get that professional team 
if you can get if you're kind of starting from nothing get recommendations get people you know uh, a name from somebody who's uh, who's been used by an individual for many years these sort of things you, you're kind of halfway there aren't you you've still got to go through the getting to know you phase anyway but if you can get a recommendation yeah. i think that's that's really really useful and you know get a sounding board i mean we we work really closely together and um, you know, we've all done different things, but sometimes a fresh pair of eyes looking over a situation can come up from time to time with a, a, an alternative solution, you know, which might have some value or ease the way in in some way. So, yeah, that's, that's really, really good. Um, Matthew, what, what plans have you got for the future? So plans for the future. I think uh, we're moving into a very interesting market. Um so always looking for opportunities. I think, Nigel, we've discussed before, um, you know, adding a new few more strings to your bow, looking at um, opportunities you wouldn't have maybe considered before, because I think we looked at um, maybe looking at sites that are in the middle of being developed to do the developers want to offload that site and maybe get a discount that way. So I think that's a route that I'm looking at at the moment and I have noticed um, in my local auctions some of those commercial sites that were flying out the door are starting to stick. Um, there was a auction this week um, locally and there was nine or ten commercial units that all had um, potential and I think two, two of them sold and the rest are unsold, which I'm already speaking to the auctioneer over. So there's definitely going to be in, uh, opportunities. It may be harder to um, require the finance and things like that, but, you know, there's always an out. You can always get a positive outcome if you look in the right places. Um, so, yeah, I think we could be, if you're in the correct uh mentorship groups and you've got the correct knowledge i think uh, this could be the next 18 months to two years could be a great time if you're in property absolutely I, I am personally hugely excited about this period um you know it's um obviously it's, it's a period of adversity but I, yeah. I just reflect on really 2007 8 9 you know that period as well and and what that does for one reason or another, it creates more volume in the market. So people looking to offsell, you know, off offload you know, commercial units, portfolios, these sort of things, for whatever reason. Yeah. But, you know, there's the opportunity, I think, that's, that's coming at us. And uh, I think we've all got to be primed and ready to ready to pounce for the next project, you know, which I think would be really good. So now that's, that's really, really, really interesting. Um, you, you're probably aware that... Um, uh, I, w I was very delighted, actually. I, I, I got invited to participate in a the writing of a, a book, uh, which uh, Mark orchestrated a few few years ago. It was called Advice to Younger Self, and um, it was written, really, um, uh, with, with a number of chapter authors. And it was all about, you know, if you could give your younger self a bit of advice you know, kind of wind the clock back based upon the knowledge that you have today, what what advice would you give them? And it really opened my mind um, into, you know, certain things that given the time again, you know, what I would do differently and, you know, the the, the knowledge that I've gained over the period of time. And uh, and we produce this book and all the, all the proceeds go to charity and continue to do so. So it's, you know, we're obviously giving back and but um, I'd, I'd probably ask you the same question now. So if, if you could give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be? I think the big one for me personally is don't hold yourself back. I think um, everyone can overthink things. Um, I certainly did at the start, which held me back on my journey, worrying about what people think. Will it all go wrong? Um, but I think with even what we've discussed in uh, this podcast, everything, you can resolve pretty much everything. So I think the biggest advice would be just get on and do it, work it out as you go along, because there's going to be trials and tribulations. But yeah, just 
get going basically if there's anyone on the fence thinking of getting into property just get started and you know work it out as you go along kind of thing absolutely absolutely <laughs> you know to change your life kind of starts now doesn't it you yeah you can't keep 100%. beating around the bush as they say and and not do it you just got to get stuck in and um and by the nature of that commitment you you learn so much along that journey and you know that would be that would be the advice to people and listeners uh, today. Just just get stuck in. But Definitely. yeah, Ma- Matthew, that's been an absolute pleasure, and I, I do appreciate your uh, you, as always very very candid in terms of your responses. And there's never any uh, you know airs or graces. You just say it as it is, which is just fantastic. And quite frankly, um, I absolutely love that that approach to life. Um, you know, I, I think lots of people can learn from, um, you know, what goes right, what goes wrong, what goes right, what doesn't go so right and all the rest of it. And you learn and you grow from it, which is just fantastic. So I, I do thank you for that. But No problem. Just, thank yeah, you. yeah, good. I mean, how can people follow you or, or get in contact? I'm not the best on social media, but I do have a handle. Um, it's quantum.properties. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, and my email address is info at quantum dash properties dot co dot uk. Um, and that's my, if anyone wants to get in touch, that's probably the best way is via email. That's absolutely fantastic. Matthew, thank you very much. You've been, Thanks, listening, to, you, you've been listening to the Property Developers and Investors podcast, Nigel Green from the Equa Academy, speaking with Matthew Hope. Thank you. <laughs>